Alexa. Hey guys, in this video I'm discussing autism in high school and why you failed in class. Obviously not your fault, all that's coming up. Hey guys, welcome back to the Aspie world. My name is Dan, I have autism, ADHD, OCD and dyslexia and I make weekly videos on this type of content. So if you're new around here and you wanna learn more, remember to hit that subscribe button by clicking the notification bell. Also, if you're watching over on Facebook, be sure to give this page a follow and a like to see more videos like this. Oh, and if you're over on Instagram and Twitter, be sure to give me a cheeky follow on those platforms as well. All videos on those too. More videos on those too. Guys, I just wanted to interject in this video because I'm super pumped about something and I just had to tell you guys about it. This is not a sponsored video. Do not get me wrong, this is not sponsored, but these were gifted to me. Um, and if you wanna get your hands on them, I have a link in the description below. Right, I'm obsessed with CBD everything, right? I love CBD, I think it's really cool and it's great for anxiety. And CBD gummies are the best way to take CBD, right? So, I used to have Yummy Nutrition CBD gummies and they were the green ones we had for a while, but they recently updated them to a strawberry flavor and they're amazing. The texture, oh, the texture is amazing. And they just look, they just look incredible. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you guys a close up of what they look like. Okay, check this out. They're just like these little, oh, love it and they're just, they're just really, really nice. It's 10 milligrams of CBD in each one of these. There's also vitamin D in them and vitamin C and vitamin, vitamin E, which is pretty much amazing. So yeah, definitely check them out, recover and de-stress. But also, they've updated their hair, skin and nails vitamins. Now I did a video all about vitamin intake and different vitamins that I have and I just absolutely like, Yummy is like the best company out there. They're all vegan friendly. They're made, uh, they're, they're a UK company um, and they're made all like fairly. There's no like, there's no grossies in them basically. Uh, you know, you can get stuff that's a bit toxic, but these are not toxic at all. Yummy, you did it again. Please check them out if you're interested, guys. I can't recommend them enough. I have a link in the description below. Actually, the link says CBD gummies, but you know, you can get any kind of gummies once you're on the site. But yeah, check it out. Okay, so on with this video. Okay, guys, so there is huge issues with high school and autism and like the, the whole integration. Like before I did a video all about preschool or primary school and autism, right? Now, if you're new around here, drop me a comment and let me know where you're watching from and what your kind of like, your background is. Do you have kids on the spectrum? Are you on the spectrum? Let me know in a comment in the comment section down below. I read and respond to every single comment, so that'd be super, super awesome. But before I did this video all about preschool and how uh, preschool, you know, a special education school is better and in all this kind of stuff, and it was good, it was a good video. Then I got a bunch of requests over on Instagram, and uh, yeah, you should totally check me out and follow me over in there, about high school. Now, high school is very, very interesting, and especially interesting for me because I attended high school in the 90s. <laughs> so I started high school in 97. Back then, I was undiagnosed with Asperger's syndrome uh, and ADHD because they still were trying to figure it out. You know, I had been to see different types of doctors and, and therapists, and my parents weren't really actively trying to push me to get different diagnoses because they were, well, well, they just didn't know how to, to be honest with you. And so, yeah, they didn't, but that didn't take away the fact that high school was difficult. Now, I had huge issues in class. Like, I used to go to class. I used to get, actually, I was so worried. Getting up and going to school would worry me because there would be so many uh, obstacles to overcome. Like, walking to school was horrendous. Like, before I moved closer to the school, I had to walk about a mile or so from, from my house to the school. And it was just horrendous. It was kind of like that scene in Beetlejuice where they opened the door. Once I they open the door to the house and it's these huge sand monsters trying to grab them and eat them. It's kind of like that since they open my front door. So I just like run to school in like a cold sweat and then get to high school. And then, uh, and you'd be around like kids, different kids, and there would be, um, you know, they'd have conversations and stuff. And I had no idea what they were talking about or any of these kind of things that they do because they go out, you know, to social clubs and do all these things that kids do. And they had all this lingo and this kind of like grown up attitude that they wanted. And I was still there, uh, just completely oblivious to all this stuff. And I didn't really fit in with those kids. Now, that was kind of like this. this social aspect of it, but that did transpose badly also to the education part of it. I mean, you think about this, I mean, how many people can relate? I mean, if you relate to this video, you've got to give it a thumbs up so I know how many people relate to what I'm saying here. But when, you know, when you're looking at a blackboard or a whiteboard or a smartboard or whatever it is you're looking at, and, and the tutor, lecturer, teacher, whatever, is explaining something to you, what do you do? Do you listen to them talking or do you focus on the blackboard or the whiteboard or whatever it is? And so, so there you have a huge communication issue because you're like, well, am I supposed to be writing these now? Nothing. So I just just sit there with my mind completely blank, like, 
have no idea. And it was just completely just, it was terrible. And it wasn't because I was bad at school, you know? And like I said on a video before, like I have a degree in chemistry now. If I was bad at school, I would never have been able to do that. But it wasn't me that was bad at school. It was the school being bad at understanding my needs and my learning types. Because schools are very much a, um, they're, they're an environment where people uh, have a, a tendency to, to just kind of go with the flow, if you will. They, the teachers kind of go with the flow. They don't, they don't kind of think outside the box. They don't do the extra mile. Well, most teachers anyway. Some teachers do. You know, you might get the old teacher who want to do more and learn more about a specific thing. Like if you're a teacher and you're watching this, like I salute you, that's super awesome. Thank you so much. And also let me know if you are a teacher and you're watching this because that'd be super awesome. And I, um, I actually interviewed a friend of mine, Chris um, from uh, SBSK, which is uh, Special Books by Special Kids. And we were, we were in uh, Massachusetts together and we did an interview on my channel and I'll try and that link down below or in a card above here and we spoke about teachers and their attitude towards special education needs specifically autism and uh, Chris used to be a teacher and so he has a really good insight on that and that's a cool video and I'll also leave it on the end card so you guys can see that as well but in terms of the actual teachers understanding my needs it didn't work so for instance when I was in um, in maths class uh, because uh, my learning type for maths was a bit different to everybody else's I was more visual but everybody else was kind of like you know um, they wanted to listen to the, the I don't know, the weird format, because there's some different formats of mathematics, like how on earth are you supposed to know which one every kid wants, right? Unless you take that time to individually assess every kid, but no schools want to do that. So I was dropped out of actually doing a GCSE, which is kind of like a high school diploma uh, score for, for mathematics. I was put into this like special ed class for maths when I was in high school, and we didn't really do anything. We just like found pictures of sporting equipment and, and like circled the ones that matched. I mean, it was completely unstimulating for me. Um, you know, it was just ridiculous. And, and this is because the school failed me. And the reason I failed in those classes was because the school failed. You're only as good as the school you're in in the level of support that you can access. When I went to university, and I'll do a video all about that, I had really good access to support and support that was provided. So those things kind of, I could focus on the things that I was good at and the things that I wasn't good at were helped with support. So the things schools were lacking and mainly high schools is a, the education and training for all the staff, and B, the support, the support network that's there, that's set up to help those children or those, those young adults kind of come to terms with the tasks at hand and then how to execute those in, in a manner where they'll understand. It's all down to learning types. If we studied and sat down and looked at people's learning types, we'd understand that there are just so many different people like that, that exist, in, you know, autism spectrum, people's minds are spectrum. It's not just people on the spectrum that will kind of get a backhand slap from school. It's loads of people. And I see this all the time. Um, and another thing is like the school environment is really bizarre. Like you're supposed to like sit down and you go out at different times and the schedule for school is really, really bizarre, especially when you think that, you know, everyone has to eat at a certain time and, and everyone has to learn at the same pace. And that's another thing, the speed of learning is, is hugely di uh, distorted. So, uh, you know, everybody has different learning types because everyone has different personality types and brain types. So as, as you're learning and you're learning and learning and learning, some people may excel um, and then some people may not excel in certain areas, but everybody has to go at the same pace. I mean, it's really bizarre. Isn't it? I mean, how on earth does that work? So the schooling system really needs to change, which begs the question, is it better to have neurodivergent children in special educational needs schools or is it better to keep them in mainstream schools now the argument there's good and bad on both sides of this argument and we do discuss this in the video i did about primary and preschools and i did a video just on autism schools but i think that regardless of which school you attend the 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 effort should be placed on the children it's almost like when you go to high school they're they're focused on the curriculum rather than the kids and i know the curriculum is important because you're teaching the curriculum to the kids but it's the kids who come first in this matter. So well, how do the kids learn? How does that kid learn? What does that kid need? And once you figure all those things out, then you can apply the curriculum in the format you've just figured out for all these kids. I mean, everything should be a, an interview process. Once you, you start your first day of high school, they should interview, discuss learning types, and you'll have a personal learning plan. I mean, that, that's like the logical way to do it, but nobody does that. And it's, it's a shame because I feel like people miss out so much because like, it, it, nobody, nobody wants to learn. Like it's, it's down to teachers and teachers alone, uh, and the, the, the education establishment to really figure that out and reassess it. Because schooling hasn't really changed for like two, three hundred years, you know. But the, the people progress differently. So that being said, 
I'm not trying to say don't go to school. I'm also not trying to say that school's a bad thing. School's an amazing thing. We should be privileged, uh, you know, we should realize that it's a privilege to actually go to school because some children don't get to go to school. But what I'm trying to say is that schools also need to try and accommodate for people on the autism spectrum and listen to the advice or just train everybody up. And it should be mandatory because it's kind of like, imagine you had a school uh, that a, a wheelchair user, a child who was a wheelchair user had to go to that school, but there was no wheelchair access for some of the classes it would be appalling right because you don't have the the support set up to enable that person to do the course so why do you have autistic kids going to the school when you don't have the ability to enable them to do that they don't have access to the learning information it, it's a lot to think about but I think it's it's something that we do need to think about and something that needs to change ASAP sooner rather than later but that being said We've got a lot of work to do, and there's, there's there's just so many things. I think that it's going to take a huge change. It's going to take a big change from a government and a social standpoint, and also parents and PTAs and all those kind of things um, to, to kind of move those things forward. I know that there are autism charities all around the world who are pushing in different areas to help in these specific things. And then, of course, there are the development of special educational needs schools um, all around the world that are kind of, you know, set up in that way where they do have personal learning plans and, and personal learning needs set up for those children. I think an integration between the two from the mainstream school and the uh, special educational schools kind of like merging together in the way that they approach the education and learning of a, a style of a child, I think that would really give some momentum to the change and it would kind of bring about the change that everybody would want from that. If you think this video is actually powerfully impactful then please share it on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram that would be super super awesome. Guys if you like this video please make sure to subscribe to this channel and check out my next video here I was talking about earlier and I'll see you next time guys. Peace.